wasn't a fast one. We just saw it get up. Yeah. Right. But then Nathan Jones found the found the little boy who was dragged away and somehow is now totally fine. And they're like, look, everybody's happy and together again, except for Bruce and Rob. But yeah. Now did the, 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 the board just dragged the kid away and said, okay, see you later. Yeah. Like that doesn't make sense. That's, that's such a fast one. That's yeah. a fast one. But this movie though, I, I still think it, I guess it's still it works though because it knows what it is, right? Is that so? I, I kind of didn't mind that at the end. I guess I didn't because I just thought oh, this guy knows what he's doing. This director, does that make sense? I, I, I was a little annoyed, but but the fact that if the boy and Nathan, if 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 I've got to have the boy come back to have Nathan Jones come back, I, I accept it because <laughs> that way Nathan Jones can be in the sequel. Yeah, and he'll imp- like improve upon his. Uh, Boar fighting. So you know, and I gotta wonder too. Thinking of a sequel, hint, hint again, Chris. Son, I'm sure you're listening to our podcast. All those other boars that were running around the countryside with the big boar, or you know, that we see a couple times anyway. Like once they're running from it, and it gores one of them. Right? Maybe it was hungry though, and it was suffering, and that's why it was turning on its own kind or something if they're the same species but then we see them at the campsite feeding on the campers and they come along too now is that because they're feeding as like a pride as a family or is that just because the big one killed something and like when the lion kills something then the hyenas come and feast like are they a family unit are they offspring is it a herd that it leads like i i i I wanted to know a little more about that, actually. Yeah, what are the dynamics of these things? Because also in Razorback, that thing hangs out with the boars, too. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're just hanging out. And Well, you, you, know, you know those movies where there's the big henchman and everyone hangs out with them, but then occasionally he just gets mad and kills one of the people? <laughs> right. It's probably just something <laughs> like that. Or just, again, like some kind of alpha male-esque thing if boars do anything like that. But don't Razorbacks cannibalize their young, as we've heard in uh, Razorback? Or Razorbacks cannibalize their young? So, so I don't know if that's accurate or not, but when it comes to a wild boar, I wouldn't actually be surprised to hear that. So, I mean, you um, know, that it's, a, it's a big thing who's hungry. But, like, if those were its young, though, then there's going to be, a, in, like, however many, a few years, there's going to be, like, ten boars that size. And so then... Instead of Nathan Jones being like Sigourney Weaver and Alien, he's in the next movie going to be like Sigourney Weaver and Aliens, being like, you guys don't understand. I've seen one of these things, and now there's eight of them. Leading a bunch of Marines <laughs> at night. And he's going to have to have a curly-haired wig like Sigourney <laughs> Weaver. Like, uh, no, like Scott Adkins from Triple Threat. <laughs> like, right, yeah, a Blanco wig. Now, I love Triple Threat, but that's the worst wig of 2019. That was especially it, it made it even worse when he had the cigar in his mouth because it made me think of a cartoon. If you had one of those exploding cigars, like what your hair would look like afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and he was covered in like dirt and soot already. So it really looked like he was like he suffered an exploding cigar gag. But he's like some Dragon Ball Super Saiyan, so it didn't hurt him. But he still looks all, all disheveled. <laughs> when, when I saw that part in the movie, I went, oh, no. Oh no! Right, and then it got you it got worry, better. You worry about the integrity of the whole movie when you see something like yeah, that. Yeah, I went, oh gosh, and then it gets better. So I was like, okay, good. I was really worried. Now, hey, <laughs> uh, we can talk about the movie more, but we have a ton of questions, don't we? We do. All right, want to get into those? All right, am I taking them? Am I, yeah, am yeah, I reading these go, off? Go for it. We have got Zane from Pennsylvania. Zane, a uh, filmmaker, by the way, he did 1031, which was a horror movie that came out a couple years ago, and I think he finished 1031 Part 2. Nice. Um, these 80s horror homages. So Zane asks, who would win in a fight, the boar from Razorback or the crocodile from Rogue? Rogue. <laughs> I, I don't know how you do this. Like. It's, I, I see it as like a Serengeti type thing where the boar comes up, Razorback comes up to drink. Because that, that crocodile dude is is the name. What was the name of it in, in Rogue? I need I should have learned this. But that, I don't remember. Yeah, that thing was gigantic, right? I mean, and it's not going to be pierced. Even if it was on land, I think it would defeat the Razorback. 
but that razorback charged but that razorback though can carry an entire home with it remember that scene in razorback it rips off the side of the house and runs with it yeah yeah and it got sufficiently less tough at the end of the movie though yeah (laughs) so kind of funny and smaller so i'm going i'm going rogue i'm going rogue crocodile you know i so yeah that's right also this is the razorback bore which was more like a three or four thousand pound bore not like a ten thousand pound bore so yeah i like at first i was thinking like is this near water maybe rogue is it in water of course rogue if it's out in the open i was thinking the bore but i was thinking of the bore from boar yeah uh kind you know i was just thinking about the size where it's that thing could eat the boar from razorback so yeah 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 it's got to be rogue got to be rogue i agree yeah, I, I think you're right. If it was boar, then we could have a different conversation. But Razorback, he does fluctuate too much, he or she. So I like and it. And also, the ra- and the boar from Razorback can't run 160 miles an hour yeah. when it charges. <laughs> <laughs> that thing that thing tops out at like 30, probably, and, and very briefly, like yeah. a cheetah. Yeah. Um, Mark, you, you, am I including your questions? Because you oh. came up with some questions. Yeah, 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 of course. So Mark, our host, asks... <laughs> Could crawl? That's Pauly Shore from Son-in-Law. Tame the boar? I, I, of course, you have an idea. Well, when right. you ask this, so here's what I'm thinking. In in Son-in-Law, he he goes home to the. Actually, they call him like Crap and Cramp and Crud. But in that crotch. movie, Crotch, yeah, Crotch. <laughs> no, crawl. They they keep messing with him by letting these pigs out, and the pigs wipe him out. But then he immediately, on the second try, learns how to ride pigs like they're nothing. Big pig, ride it easy. He natural knack. So boar. Now I'm also looking at at son-in-law, or I'm sorry, Encino Man about his engineering skills. I'm looking at in the army now with his smarts. I think crawl could totally get on the back of the boar and ride it. I do. I don't. I think I I could see a world where the thing's running 160 yards and crawls just on the back going whoa. So yeah, so, I think I think he could tame the boar with his, his with his PG- weave. If this is PG or PG-13, I'm 100% with you. He could be best buds with this thing by the end of the movie and riding it like a hippie flower cult leader. Yep. Weezing if this is juice. rated R, but if this is rated R, if he were to win, he'd be winning like the stoner in the cabin in the woods, covered in blood, beaten up, left for dead, but somehow he pulls it through and kills that boar. Yeah, I, I, I see. I think he somehow rides the boar into an explosives and then dives off. And then the thing blows up, and everyone thinks Crotch is dead. I mean, crap. Uh, cramp. Uh, crud. Eat the crotch out of a low-flying yeah. duck. <laughs> and, crotch. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just, uh, bloody, like you said, bloodied up. But I know this sounds insane, and people are shaking their heads, but I, I just see it. I see it clearly in my head, John. I can't shake it. And you know me. I go with my feelings on listener questions that I ask myself. <laughs> Okay, so Dylan, uh, Dirty D from Australia asks, what's the proper format that should be used to consume killer monster pig? Bacon? Sausages? Pork chops? Okay, it would have to be, I mean, there's so much. You would have... (sighs) You're feeding that whole town. Yeah, so you got to get it back quick, too. So... Field I think dressing that thing is going to be a mess. Yeah, and you're going to lose a lot of meat because I've watched when, when you when you pierce that abdomen enough to start gutting it, it's going to be like like one of those like comedy movies where where they where they puncture the above ground pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't pop the and don't pop the kid like the kidney. That'd be so gross. <laughs> I mean, they're going to have to get big slabs of what they got, freeze it. So I'm thinking probably pork chops, like bigger slabs, because you're in the middle of nowhere. You can't get a car there, and it's very hot out there in the outback. So, right? Would you even want to yeah, eat that no, meat? You're being very practical about it. I, I, you, I'm suddenly finding this undesirable. <laughs> <laughs> like, in my head, I'm just thinking, you know, like – like uh, it's everything. Like one of those like big like Argentine grills that's like 
Ah. <laughs> like six feet deep by 12 feet long. And it's like, here's a section of three feet by six feet of sausages. And here's a section of three feet of six feet of like, like loins. And here's three feet of six feet of sausages again. And three feet by six feet of pork chop tomahawk looking things. Like I'm thinking of that or to keep it a little more primal, right. And the impracticality of field dressing, I think of it like some kind of Conan thing where like you cut out its heart and take a bite out of it to 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 gain the power of your enemy. Oh, I'd gain that. I saw it. Yeah, as, it would be disgusting though. I saw it as Waterworld, <laughs> where he kills a gigantic prehistoric monster, and they just take two slabs of meat from it. Right, take like five pounds out of the thing. <laughs> the, the thing is just rotting. I mean, it'll it'll do great on the bottom of the ocean because you know how many animals will feed off of it. I mean, that's like an those ecosystem. Crabs are gonna have a field day down there. Yeah, and those huge sharks from planet Earth too. I mean, that's its own ecosystem in itself. So I mean, yeah, the the, the the carcass will be taken care of. So I guess I'm not too worried about waste. But you're not gonna be able to get that much meat from that gross pig. I'm I'm just saying a couple no, chops. Just... Yeah, like if that thing died within a mile of town, it's one thing, right? You just go get you just go get the uh, the like your, your your sports team canopies and you just set it up right over there. Yeah, bring some ice. Bring Someone's some digging a pit for coal. Yeah, and you exactly. bury a big chunk of it with the coal, like a pig roast, like a Cuban pig roast. Oh, that that'd be nice. So, so you you had a question that I that why well, I mean it was a great one. You said who wins, the screaming bear from annihilation or the boar? And when you asked that. First off, the first thing that pops in my head is the scream of that bear from Annihilation, which was the most jarring thing in that weird-ass movie. You know how many people use the word terrifying? I think it's an easy word, and I'm not jumping on people for doing that. But without hyperbole, when I saw and heard that bear, it was terrifying. It opens its its skull-like bear mouth and releases a human scream. Yeah. Like, that is... It's nothing Lovecraftian about it, really, in a way, but at the same time, it's everything Lovecraftian. It is just some some indescribably wrong thing. We have seen a, encounter. we've seen a lot of horror movies, and I think that's why it really hit me hard, John, is because it's wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't get scared yeah, yeah. much in films. I don't get off put. I mean, mostly Korean movies do that to me, like Thirst because and. Everything that we've seen, though, we've seen four or five times already. It's just now seeing it in new, innovative, inspired, clever, or storytelling ways. But it's like we've usually seen these things before. This we haven't seen. (laughs) All that being said, the boar, just 160 miles it. Well, what if it sees the boar, though, first? And then the boar can't go 160 miles an hour. I mean, it it, it, it was a third the size of the boar, right? Oh, well, um, I'd say a tenth or okay. less because yeah. I mean, it was just it was just a bear. It was probably just a like even if it was a large bear, five, six hundred pounds. Yeah, the boar's got it. But I, so if the boar had any higher cognitive function, though, it would be so scared. I think it would be a stalemate. It would scream. <laughs> it just wouldn't even know like it would it would start to charge and then the thing would scream and it would like freeze and like like drag and it's in place like it doesn't know what to do. Like it stops and drag. Like so, hard stop I was on the brakes. I was a bouncer at a bar, and sometimes at these hardcore shows, some fights would break out. But you would have these scrappy 150 pounders, right? That just probably could swing haymakers and windmill windmill at you for for <laughs> for you know because they probably don't know how to fight too well. So it was windmill, but they'll windmill at you for you know 10 minutes. And if you're a big guy and you just see this maniac tornado. Tasmanian yeah. devil with a fist coming out of it. Exactly. You're going to kind of just – like, I could probably do this, but it's not worth it. Does that make sense? It's so, scary because it's unpredictable. You, yeah. you you can predict you will win, but the unpredictability of what you're looking at makes it jarring. So when that bear – or so when the boar hears the screaming bear, it's going to think. Because bo- <laughs> pigs are smart. So it's going to go, is this worth it? Do I, you know what I mean? Like T-Rex is, oh, yeah. I'm not reading a T-Rex's mind, but a T-Rex isn't doing a frontal assault on a, let's say these things, ex- like they did exist obviously, but as we know them, the T-Rex is going to look at the Triceratops and be like, this might break my leg. I don't, T-Rex can think like that, but they're small, you know what I mean? Like they're not, they're not going to do that. So I'm thinking the boar 
the boar would still destroy the bear, but he would it would destroy. Have, it would have to think about it. It would even if it was a flawless victory, like a Mortal Kombat flawless victory, it would be terrified the whole time that it was killing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the movie where you kill the demon. Like, assuming there's a bunch of demons in the movie, but the person keeps, like, keeps stabbing it or punching it, like, long after it's dead because they're just so terrified. They're or just in the moment. Like a zombie. <laughs> that's all gross attacks you. And you right. kill it quite easily. You just hit it in the